All right, you're all set, George. Good morning, seeing the presence of the quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of GOL uh, to order. It is exactly 10.30 a.m. and it is June 2nd. This meeting is being recorded. And uh, let me just read uh, the usual uh, uh, advisory pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting of GOL is being conducted by remote participation. I'm just gonna take a moment and make sure that uh, first of all, committee members are present and can be heard. And then I will check with our guests. We have a number of guests this morning to deal with the first two items of business. Um, Mandy Jo. Present. Pat. Present. Darcy. Here. And Sarah. Present. Great, so, and I'm gonna check with our guests. Uh, Heather, if you just uh, say hello. Hello, Heather Present. Great, thank you, Heather and Irv. Okay, I saw the wave. Um, you'll have to unmute at some point, maybe Irv, but we'll see. Um, oh, no. and, oh, good, there you are, thank you. And Michelle. Present. Okay, and it looks like Kathleen Anderson. Kathleen, if you could just check in. Present, 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 present. Okay, <laughs> Kathleen is definitely here. Um, <laughs> Kathleen, if you have your, if you have your, it looks like you've joined twice, maybe with two different devices. If you have speakers on one of them, you just want to turn the speakers all the way down. I've then, already done that. Thank oh, you. Okay, great. Thanks. Perfect. Sound great now. That's great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to put the uh, agenda up on the screen just for a moment. We're going to begin um, with the um, uh, charge, the American Heritage Reparation Coalition Committee charge. Um, and then we'll turn to the uh, uh, resolution in support of HR 40 and Senate 40. Um, but let's just put the agenda up on the screen. If I can find it, there it is. Bear with me for a second. Okay. So, um, as I said, we're going to begin with the charge and then turn to the uh, uh, to the resolution, and we'll put those up on the screen. Um, then uh, we'll turn to Juneteenth proclamation. Um, and we have, I think the rest of the business is fairly straightforward. It's all committee business. We have a uh, selection guidance for DAB. And we have to declare the pool, the, the, <laughs> the pool sufficient. We also do the same for FinCom. And hopefully we'll have time to get to item nine. Um, we do have to make a decision about our GOL calendar. I did uh, check out with a uh, check in with everybody uh, earlier in the week, and I didn't hear anyone say nay, but we need to agree that we're willing to meet on the 23rd, which is, would be a special meeting. And then my uh, SOP to you all was to cancel the 30th. Um, Pat. Yes, I wanted to make sure the resolution, because you told the sixth graders to be here about 11.15. That is correct. Thank you, Pat. That's actually under the 48-hour rule. I and, thought so, but I wanted to check. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. And so at 11.15. Um, so for our guests, what we do, this committee, essentially, our mantra is clear, consistent, and actionable. We uh, generally do not discuss the merits or demerits of any particular resolution, proclamation, or, or citation. Um, though sometimes we do cross that line, but generally we're concerned with simply making sure that it, it is clear, consistent, actionable, and we send it on to the council and there it is discussed in full and then voted on. Um, so the hope is that these items that we're gonna look at this morning um, will go to the council at the very next meeting and be voted on by the full council. Here, our job is simply to uh, recommend to the council um, and that's what we're gonna do. Um, we ask sponsors to be present. They don't have to be, but we really appreciate them coming um, because as we go through it, we often have questions and we want to make sure that if we make any changes or edits, that it is agreeable to the sponsors. And so that's uh, why we've asked you to be here. So um, at any point, you may raise your hand if you have a question or concern, and we may ask you directly some questions. Um, so don't be shy about, about raising your hand, um, either by using the raise hand function or just by raising your hand. My colleagues are also very good about uh, noting if I'm missing somebody, uh, letting me know, because my eyes are usually glued on the text and not on the screen. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna put this away and put up, um, let me see here. Okay, let's go back for a second. Okay, 
I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Put this back where it came from. And so I'm going to start with the charge. Okay, and I'm going to share the screen. Whoops. Let's put you away too. Okay. So here is the committee charge. Um, Mandy, my understanding is that you've already had a go at this. Is that correct? That you, um, if I, am I correct in understanding this, that you helped the sponsors put this in sort of the format it's in right now? Yes, I helped them put it in this format. Right. I did not deal with any sort of language per se, but okay, good. No, the good. format That's... and the right like legal references and everything. Good, good, good. So what I've asked my committee members to do, and hopefully they've had a chance to do that, is look this over in advance. I'll look over all of the items, all four items we have this morning. Um, and if they have any questions or concerns, normally go through it line by line. Um, and that's what I'm going to start to do. But first, let me just see if there are any hands uh, from the committee members, any concerns? Uh, Mandy, Pat, Darcy, or Sarah? And I can't see everybody, so you may have to just speak up. I'm not seeing any hands. I'm not seeing any. Uh, Mandy, please. I have questions, but when we get to it, I'll bring them up. Okay. Let me, first of all, do something I need to do anyway. Um, I'm going to put track changes on. Okay. Uh, African Heritage Reparation Coalition, AHRC. Um, this is an ad hoc town committee. And the legal reference is the Amherst Home Rule Charter Section 2.5. The appointing authority is the town manager per Amherst Charter Section 3.3C. There are seven voting members. There are no non-voting members. Uh, it says one or two towns of uh, one or two town councilors. Apparently, that's going to be left that way. I guess one or two. Okay. Um, term of appointments one year. Special municipal employee yes, and the staff support will be provided either the town manager or designee of the town manager. Any concerns about any of that? And the sponsors are okay with that language. That's exactly what they intend. Michelle, please. Mm. Um, the only thing that we sort of realize later, and I'm not sure if it matters, but um, we have the Human Rights Commission, so the, the HRC piece. I, I don't know. Another counselor brought that to my attention, so I just thought I would mention it. I'm not mm. You're you're talking about the just the abbreviation A H R C. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's minor, maybe, but I I wanted to bring it up since someone did mention it to me. Okay. So we could change the coalition to a board or working group or something that would get rid of the C. Couldn't we just say coalition? The African Heritage Reparation. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> I'm not awake. I totally apologize. I've been... right. I don't. I don't see a problem. I don't know if others do. Um, it is a different uh, uh, acronym, and it's quite distinctive. Um, I don't know. How do people feel? Do they feel it? We can certainly fool with the language. Um, put in working group or something else. But a coalition. I like that. Um, any thoughts? I like Michelle it. Doesn't have a strong is. feeling about it, so I think we can leave it. Unless, hey, we, uh, could, we could change it to assembly instead of coalition assembly, African American Heritage Assembly, reparation assembly. So A H R A. There you go. Well, what, what did the sponsors think about that? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is that a yes, Irv? I, didn't hear yeah, I think that's a yes. Okay, all right. I'm going to do that for the moment. Um, and we can always come back and change it. But so it would be A R A. A H R A. Okay. All right. Um, any other issues with the, uh, what's the technical term name for this whole I block? A block? I don't know. Okay, fine. Thank you. You see, we're not, I still have a lot to learn. Okay. Composition, seven voting members, six black residents, four of whom are former or current appointed or elected officials in Amherst. And one representative of, of reparations for Amherst, R4A. 
any concerns there? Mandy? So this is where this is one of the things I have a question on, um, but I, I was just looking up the community safety working group charge. Um, my question was the fact that it, you know, and, and I don't want this to imply that I don't support the majority of this committee, if not all of it being black residents, um, but being a government, I, I had a concern that can we actively pretty much say this committee can't have any white people on it or Asian people or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I looked at the community safety working group charge um, that says no fewer than six of the nine voting members shall represent black indigenous people of color or other historically marginalized communities. Um, and so I'm less, you know, while I still have those concerns, um, I have less of a concern because we've done it all, well, the manager has done it once, um, but mm -hmm. I, it, it doesn't go to, I guess, the makeup more as to the, I guess, the actionability part of what we have to vote per se. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Darcy. Yeah, I, I have a, a, another substantive comment, <laughs> um, which is, um, I'm not, I don't have an issue with the six black residents, but I, and just wondering about the four of whom are former or current appointed or elected officials. Mm -hmm. um, why I, I, and so we don't have to discuss that here because we're not supposed to, but I do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering why I can't just be six black residents, um, but like I said, we're, we're only supposed to be looking at the well, language here. So you don't, you don't see it as an issue of actionability, but rather you have an issue of, of just the sort of logic behind it. And, right. and that's, yeah. that's sort of a I'm different not, question. I'm not, clear yeah. on, I'm not clear on the rationale for that, but you okay. know, we don't have to discuss it here. Okay. So our referral allows us for this charge to discuss both, just so okay. you know. I think, yeah. So why don't you, yeah, Darcy, go oh. ahead. I mean, you have a question, go ahead. So you're, um, you're really asking the sponsors for rationale. Yeah. Or why four of whom are former or current appointed or elected officials. So if the sponsors wish to respond, then they have um, a question. Yeah. yeah. Just jump in and say that the, um, the rationale behind it is that these are people who have been, um, their, their election, their selection by the community gives them credibility and the uh, mm -hmm. Kind of mandate from the community to serve in this capacity. That that was the, the primary reasoning, was that they've been through a process of being selected by the community at large. Mm -hmm. Well, no, these are people who are town. They can just be town staff. They haven't been. They've been selected by the town manager. Um, it says and, elected officials. It says elected officials. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, but I guess I'm more interested in appointed because um, that just means people who have been yeah. were yeah. on the town staff. But it, yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. Is what I'm huh? what I'm not clear about in this composition, and I guess it's more the methodology. But who is the appointing authority of these seven voting members? Would it be the town council? Would it be the town uh, manager through the town council? How how will the seven actually be a, uh, be named to this body? Uh, manager. So the town manager under our charter has to appoint the seven. Yeah. So appointing authority is a town manager. The town council will have to confirm or approve those appointments. So they will still come through the council for that approval after he has appointed them. In, that, they, okay. In that regards, I, if, if the uh, language would be uh, better as just open to six black residents uh, uh, or six African heritage residents, that would be fine. The, as far as the rationale goes, um, the process we're really trying to create ultimately, and I think this follows further down into the charge itself, is that it is to um, develop a, uh, a consultative process with the uh, African heritage residents of um, 
of, of the town of Amherst. And they ultimately would be the, uh, the, uh, the entity, the group, the will that would express uh, support for whatever proposals uh, would go forward to be funded by the fund that may emerge from this process. So the actual committee itself is merely a, a mechanism that would interface with the council um, uh, and town government to, to develop the fund, to develop this process, but of itself, it, um, it, it is not the authoritative body that's going to say, this is what our, our reparations funding should, should be spent on or not. They, if they do, they would only be doing it as expressing the will of this consultative process. So really who is here uh, uh, among those seven voting members to try and uh, um, develop uh, reparations proposals um, is, is, uh, doesn't have to go with the, the language about uh, current uh, uh, elected officials. We organized in that way um, in terms of reaching out to begin this process, the, this, this work of developing a consultative process with the African heritage community by going to those who had held townwide elected office, not town appointments, not um, uh, district level uh, uh, elected positions, but townwide elected positions. And, and we thought by getting the six of us who had held townwide elected positions that it would um, be the closest to the model of Evanston, Illinois, which had a member on the council. We don't have a member on the Council of African Heritage. So we were trying to make the closest approximation to begin this, this process within the African heritage community. And so the idea came, let's go to those who have held townwide office. Uh, and we found six, there were six African heritage people uh, alive in Amherst uh, who have held or currently hold townwide elected office. And that's how this came about. But whether that language uh, necessarily should persist in the composition, I leave to you all, but that's the rationale. Yeah, I would only, I would remove the appointed part of that. So four of whom are former or current elected officials. Is what you're suggesting, Irv? Yes. I'm just gonna strike it for the moment. Um, I'll, I'll just add that I think the reason appointed was in there is because one of the six members or maybe two of the six members of the group that uh, Dr. Shabazz just spoke about had been had gone through a process of appointment as opposed to being elected for some reason. That's what I remember hearing. I don't know if um, if maybe that that person wants to to speak. I think, was it you, Hala? I, I, I'm not sure if, the, if that's true or not, but. Yes, I, I took over a seat. So I was technically appointed by the town council's vote, but I wasn't um, elected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, could say, we could potentially say former or current members of elected bodies. Townwide. Yeah, the townwide seems to be important. I'm kind of uncomfortable. Yep, um, go ahead. That. Because I feel like that pool, um, it was just shared that it's six people, it's a very limited pool. Um, and it seems to me, I, I totally support this um, committee, you know, this committee, absolutely. And I totally understand that it would be um, all decisions about where reparations were going, what they are, would be made by uh, residents um, of African heritage. No problem with that. But there, it feels like we're saying, okay, here are the people, here are, here's this little special group of the African heritage community, and they're going to be doing this. And it feels to me the community is broader than the, four, the six of you uh, who've been elected. Ben Harrington has been appointed, not elected. Is he not? And that's 
why I like keeping appointed there. I, I no, think ben, ben, ben was elected. Ben, ben was, was definitely ben, elected. Oh, I, have, I stand corrected. Thank you, Amakar. I have his sign in my backyard. Oh, he's been elected to school committee. I'm thinking about Human Rights Commission. Right, right. That's why. Yeah, but you're right. Um, but that's but it's still then an example because if he weren't on school committee, he wouldn't be able to be part of this group. And it feels to me too too constrained. That's my opinion. Uh, and it's up to the sponsors to make a decision here, not me. Remember now that there there are seven voting members, uh, six yeah, black but, residents. Yeah, but the majority four. is uh, limited to a, a current, a, a former or current elected officials, which we agree is very limited pool. Oh, so, I, I have no, I have no problems with recognizing, stipulating that it's a limited pool. That it is. And yeah, because of institutional ra racism. I understand that, but I'm still I'm still uncomfortable with it. You know, I, I don't think it's broad enough for it, for the. Yeah, I think the, we're, we're, yeah, the rationale, if I might just uh, go a little further to say that it was really in order to um, <clears throat> bring forth people that, for the sake of the council and the sake of town government. Uh, that these are individuals who would serve in this capacity, who are very familiar, who are, are perhaps some of the more familiar with town government processes, but certainly out of the 2000 plus or uh, more than a thousand uh, African heritage people in Amherst over 18, 18 years or older, you can certainly find, you know, more, uh, uh, you right. know, than, than this group. So I'm not wedded to the language, but I'm just providing the rationale. It was really to provide people that the council could work with and the council could have some sense uh, and the manager, some sense that these were folks who understood certain things like open meeting law, certain things like how, you know, government, how town government works, uh, that these would be people readily familiar with some of those processes, as opposed to just picking, you know, from from that pool of more than a thousand uh, adult residents of uh, of Amherst. I, I, I I'm, I'm Irv. I have to go in a minute, but I would agree with you, Amelcar. The the language is not necessarily something that we have to stick to. However, I believe that in the charge to the town manager, the town manager. Uh, uh, can be directed uh, to give preference and selection to the committee to the uh, uh, six people uh, who have been appointed or elected, former appointed or elected officials. He could, he, you can change all that language and leave it wide open. But underneath that, the town manager uh, can be directed to give special preference to those particular people. Okay, Mandy. Oh, Sarah had her hand up, I thought. I'm sorry, Sarah, please. I guess just I wanted to say that through our first term as town councilors, I think one thing that we've found is that there's a large majority of town councilors who are pushing back against all of the rules, even open meeting law. And, you know, we don't always say I, and there's been a real pushback um, to not have those formal ways because many counselors feel that it limits um, the people that you have that represent you. So, um, and then it also limits communication. So I just wanted to, just, to, just for your consideration, I'm not saying change the wording now, but um, that's something that you, you know, later on, you know, when you're doing something you might think about is that, you know, not everyone who is in uh, town government right now agrees with those rules, although I under completely understand your rationale. Okay, Mandy. So uh, listening to the conversation, I'm leaning more towards either eliminating that clause or changing it from four to maybe two um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's actually important to have some experience on a committee that's going to be proposing a municipal reparations plan because you need to have some idea and some 
I think there's there's benefit to having people who have operated within the municipal program and things to um, give that that experience there um, about what might be able to be done or how might that look or how might that happen. Um, at the same time, um, as Dr. Shabazz just indicated, there's a huge number of uh, African heritage residents in town that might be interested in this. And looking at um, four of seven, which actually becomes then five of seven, if you add a representative of reparations for Amherst in, you've left only two slots open for the rest of the community. Um, and that seems a bit small to me. Um, and then there's also the consideration of sometimes um, former or current elected officials can, for better or worse, overwhelm those who have never been in a committee like this and have outsized influence. And then to put a majority of that on a committee um, might, might not work as well as we had hoped. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't. Um, and so maybe dialing that back to it allowing for residents who may have never been involved in any community municipal committee onto this committee, opening it up to even more might be a, it doesn't mean it will be for, right? It all depends on who applies, but giving that option to the manager to, to potentially do that, I, I think is where I'm more leaning to. So I think I'd probably take it down to two if the if reparations and, and the, pro, the proponents here believe we need someone, because I do think there's a benefit to that. Well, you know, I, um, it, 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 if, if you're talking about numbers here uh, and you're taking it down to two, um, then the, um, the, the suggestion in terms of what we, we were trying to do uh, would, would, wouldn't really um, be, will have, wouldn't even have any kind of impact in terms of what you're saying, Mandy. So I, I would uh, just say, hey, all right, let's have a committee of seven voting members. And the town manager is appointing these particular members. But I believe that it would be appropriate that there be some kind of uh, qualifications, some uh, some kind of way of de determining who would be on this committee. To leave it just wide open, to me, would uh, suggest that, hey, this isn't really a, an important committee. If it's really important, if it's going to have some impact for the, uh, on the town, then it seems to me that the people on it should be some very serious people. Mm -hmm. Um, Michelle? The other option would be to increase the number of members from seven to nine, uh, which is something that Mandy and I spoke a little bit about and the, the pros and cons of that. Obviously for scheduling, it can be harder, um, but I really appreciate what everyone has said and what Mandy said about not overwhelming the group uh, with <clears throat> all or you know, most elected officials and also having experience on this particular committee committee does seem uh, really important. So I would be open if, you know, uh, to just throw in there that uh, maybe a nine member uh, composition would work. And then the um, four could stay as is. So it's another suggestion. Yeah, I would just add that if if um, if that the numbers were taken out, the four of whom phrase that um, it could re be replaced with an experience requirement, and it um, the you know I've been uh, um, involved in some other committee charges. And one of the things that we like to add is um, that the members have a commitment to the purpose of the committee, um, which I don't think should be assumed. Um, so you, you just want to have members appointed who have a commitment to the purpose.
So we have, um, I see uh, Dr. Shabazz, go ahead. So hearing what's been said, I just would reiterate as one, one um, sponsor uh, uh, interested in this, that no problem with um, uh, amending uh, that clause or deleting the, cl the clause. Um, I think that the um, six blacks residence is important uh, in a composition that's remaining with the number seven in that it's part of, again, expressing that will of the targeted community, the community that, that this is aimed to, to address. Um, the, uh, but it could just after six blacks residents, if you want to give any additional guidance in the composition to the, to the, to the appointing authority is to say, as Darcy just mentioned, um, with experience and in, uh, in municipal governance and uh, supporting uh, the, the aims of this, of this uh, 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 assembly or, or porting, supporting the aims of this uh, uh, program, that would be fine <clears throat> from my standpoint. So Dr. Shabazz, if I hear you correctly, you're comfortable with the number seven, because um, one suggestion is to raise it to nine. Um, I'm thinking, again, that's still up to debate, but um, if we keep it at seven, what if language something to the effect of at least two of whom? So the idea is to give some uh, flexibility, to, to make clear to the town manager that uh, there's an intent here to uh, draw on those who have former or current experience uh, with the town as elected or appointed officials. And I think that's important. And I think that um, I think that's something that I, we don't want to lose. You could keep it here, which is where it is right now, or you could put it down below. I'd like to keep it here if possible, um, but it should be in here, I think. Um, but the number is something that people are balking at for seems, um, but we could leave it up to the town manager, but we could say at least two of whom would that um, sort of find a middle ground between a four, which does seem to weight it a certain way, but also give the town manager a clear signal, which I'm sure he'd be aware of, but clearly in the charge that at least some of the members should represent this group who have experience with the town and represent, in a sense, I would think the elders in a way, um, is the way I see it, um, through their experience and, and through their commitment over, over the years. So um, would that be acceptable? Those are very good points. I think that the other thing that I'm hearing that's um, I hadn't really thought about in this process is that the, if I'm understanding correctly, so the uh, upon this being approved by the council, the manager would then put out a call for um, uh, nomination, self-nomination, see who's mm -hmm. interested. People would send in a brief letter describing their their background and interest and why they'd like to be on this African Heritage Reparations Assembly. And from there, uh, the manager would go through these different um, uh, letters. I don't know that he'd need a screening committee like he did with Community Safety Working Group, but whichever way he would go about it, um, he would then, based upon the applications that came in, would then proceed to select whatever number we're saying. And I'm only saying go with seven for what Michelle mentioned earlier is just the, the reducing the difficulty of, of, of scheduling and, and whatnot for, for, a larger, for a larger body. Um, and then also the, the, it's not like, well, we have 13 counselors, but that's representing an entire town. So I think seven is maybe a good enough number for the, the, what we're dealing with here. So I just would say recognizing that process, it's really just a matter of trying to give a little guidance to the manager as he mm -hmm. would go through all of these applications that would come in. So whether one would say at least two or uh, with preference given to those with municipal government experience, um, whatever the case may be, it's, it's just providing a little additional guidance. But as you say, um, these are probably characteristics he would be, be looking at anyway, but um, it's, so it's just a matter of how, how much you wanna, um, in a sense, try to 
limit or tie his hands and how much is he been free to select based upon the applications he gets and what he thinks would make a good, a good group. So um, uh, given that I could see either the at least two or preference given to those with municipal government uh, experience would be fine. How about the rest of the sponsors? Um, I, I would like to move this along. I know, uh, I, think Irv, I think Irv may have left us already, but um, I can't see it from the screen, but um, uh, we have two options here. Uh, first, keeping the number seven, unless uh, there's a sense that you'd like to change it. Um, I'm suggesting at least two of whom. Um, the other option would be uh, with preference given to. Um, my only concern about that, which the language is fine, but that could lead to, you know, in theory, at least all six could be chosen. I think the manager would not do that. Um, I think um, he is very, I, my experience over the, over the years with him is that he does usually uh, seek advice of others. He doesn't do this by himself. And uh, I think he would certainly strive to have a, a sort of a broad spectrum of age and experience. But this document and the intent, it seems, of the sponsors is to at least say that some of the people chosen should have this kind of experience. That makes sense to me. I'd like to keep it in. So how about at least two of whom? Is that acceptable to the sponsors? It's really the sponsors right now that I'm worried about um, because this is your, your charge. <laughs> I mean, you've shaped it. And um, so that's a suggestion, at least two of whom. Okay, I'm seeing nods. Again, we can change this before we vote on it, but I'm going to say at least two of whom are former or current appointed or elected officials in Amherst. And I think we've agreed to keep appointed because that again, broadens the net. Um, it's a bit awkward, but I don't mind. <laughs> it's, it really captures, I think, um, I hope it captures the intent of the sponsors um, and gives clear guidance or gives guidance to the town manager. Um, Can I also ask that while you're making those edits, yes. that you change where it says purpose you change that to A, yep, A, thank you. R, A. Thank you. As well as under charge. Yep, thank you. That I can do. Okay, for the moment, uh, <coughs> uh, go ahead, please. If you, in terms of the appointed, I think um, Kathleen Anderson suggested we could say who um, formerly or currently held, hold, elected, uh, positions. Never mind. I just messed That's it up. Right. That's all right. There's a way to say like have been in that position without saying appointment or elected if um, okay. you know. I think it was current or former former or current members of elected bodies. Thank you. <laughs> current or former members. I'll put it in. Or former members of, okay, of elected bodies. In Amherst, is that acceptable? So six black residents, comma, at least two of whom are, whoops, I just did a type, are current or former members of elected bodies in Amherst. That will not, okay, is that acceptable? Okay. Um, purpose. The AHRA's mission is to study and develop reparation, reparation proposals for people of African heritage in Amherst. The charge, the AHRA shall, one, develop and recommend to the town council a municipal reparations plan that includes both a reparations fund and a community-wide process of reconciliation and repair for harms against black people. This plan shall include sub one, a plan for developing ongoing funding streams to repair past harms committed by the town against black people. Sub two, an allocation plan, which will be determined and approved by the broader black community through a census and community feedback process. Sub point three, additional means of repair for anti-black structural and communal racism, including public events and activities that prioritize truth telling and reconciliation. Can we stop there for a second? That has a period. Had the Go period ahead. there. Um, in in the non sub one, develop and recommend the plan should probably be capitalized. The municipal so here, reparations plan. Ah, uh, so in this sentence, 
in the no oh, up here right here up I there. See it. yes yep. thank you and then i i have two questions i think they both fall under number sub two an allocation plan yeah um first question is does that plan include eligibility because i know or is it intended to include eligibility i know eligibility is always a huge question on on these matters and i didn't totally see anything about the plan coming forward with eligibility requirements so is that part of number sub two the allocation plan i wonder if it's assumed sorry <laughs> i wonder if it's assumed that the um under the first heading where it says um can you scroll up please all the way up yes um black residents in amherst the reparations is for um residents of amherst so doesn't that um doesn't yeah, that I, indicate it, it does to a sense i guess when i've read about reparations plans the evanston one goes to people who um i think it's who have who can document a family member was a resident back in the 60s or earlier. Um, and that's that's why I I don't know where, like who is going to be eligible beyond black residents and and is it going to be a subset of black residents? And I, I could ask a lot of questions about that that's more specific, but it's more about does does this include the does the plan include coming up with that eligibility requirement? I think you're right. Uh, Subsection two is where those issues would be hammered out. And um, if you either want to uh, take it that in the in the carrying out of the charge, <clears throat> the group will will address that. But if you want to put in uh, a specific guidance to the committee to address it, I think that would be the the area where 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 uh, something to that effect would take place. But I, I, I would agree with you that uh, in the development of an allocation plan, um, what, where, where those uh, resources would go per the community consultative process would have, would be very directive about where, uh, where or to whom, uh, who's eligible, who uh, under that. For, for that type of reparations too. By the way, as we've, I think elsewhere indicated in here, there are other uh, uh, means regarding it that um, in terms of the, some of the educational, some of the uh, town-wide events, uh, those, you know, uh, are, would be maybe a little less concerned with uh, proving uh, residency you know, uh, or, or that type of thing. They're things that are just more aimed more generically, uh, I would think to African heritage people. But yes, I think you're, you're right in targeting that in subsection two, that's where that concern would be, would be addressed. Well, one could insert an eligibility requirements. I tend to kind of leave it the way it is and, and accept as Dr. Um, Shabazz points out that that's where it's going to be dealt with anyway. I don't know, Amanda, do you have a thought on that? I, I just wanted to make sure it was part of that thinking as that subsection. And if it hadn't been thought of as part of that thinking, I just maybe ask that you put eligibility in there somewhere, an allocation and eligibility plan. I don't think given Dr. Shabazz's explanation that we need it though. Okay, I can't see all hands. So is there anyone else that... Um... I was just going to confirm ah, that Matthew, the, please. Yeah. That, that, uh, that the allocation plan includes some kind of eligibility criteria. Um, that's, you know, it was assumed there. And yeah, if it helps to have it articulated, that's fine. I'm just going to put it in for people to see it. An allocation plan, including eligibility criteria, comma, is a suggestion. And then I just had one other question about what was the intent, well, not the intent, I know what the intent is, but what's the, um, 
the thinking about the approved by the broader Black community, um, both broader meaning Amherst Black community or broader beyond Amherst? Um, and is there a thinking about what that would look like? And maybe, and I ask the what that would look like because the way number two is worded, the way I read it is that it would have to be approved that, that the broader black community would have had to approve that plan prior to the town council receiving the recommendation from this committee on that plan. And that's right. That's exactly right. Okay. If, Does, if, is, if, is there any if, idea of how that would happen or is that being left up to the committee? If I might, it's, it's, Kathleen. Sorry. I was just gonna say that it's the black communities decision how that will happen. We uh, are organizing to uh, uh, look at the reparations proposal for the town of Amherst. So it's our decision as black residents, what that, um, what the eligibility looks like. We're the broader community. If it helps to make people feel more comfortable to say the broader Amherst black community, then that can be put into it. Um, and it is our intention as a, a Black community of Amherst to call ourselves together as a assembly to make decisions on the reparations. And if I might add to that, the, um, the real key word in that subsection too is uh, census, through a census. The effort that we envision uh, occurring in the community to which this, this committee would, would interface with is the determining of uh, those residents similar to the way in which the US Census uh, goes out every 10 years and ask um, and under the demographic data uh, who identifies as Black or African American. Well, in a similar way, we are interested in, in establishing that um, uh, number um, with, with the means to communicate with that, uh, those identifying as Black or African American residents, and, to, uh, and that that's where the community consultative process would really would really emerge. So in some ways, eligibility, all of that is linked to the actual, the actual census, getting a sense of who's here and a, a, a communication channel to those who are of voting age, who are 18 or above, um, that identify as African heritage. We are, um, we are not drawing distinctions between uh, Africans uh, in that African heritage group. If you uh, were born in Cape Verde and came here uh, 20 years ago, 30 years, whatever, moved to Amherst and you've been living here and you're currently an Amherst resident, we don't draw that distinction and say, oh no, you're out or you're, you were born in Jamaica or you were born in Haiti or Nigeria, you're out. We don't, we're, our thinking, and the thinking that we will be developing the census around and reaching out to the community on doesn't draw those distinctions of where you're born. It's based upon being resident in the town uh, for a certain period of time and, uh, and identifying as black or of African heritage. Uh, I have a question about the, uh, how community is being defined. Uh, does it include undocumented people of African heritage? That's important to me that resident doesn't block someone who needs support from receiving it if they're undocumented. So, so we, I'm curious we avoided, how you've thought about that. Good, good, good question. We have avoided using terms like citizen for that reason and instead using resident. So again, if... Uh, for example, I think of our late brother Benny, uh, you know, brother Benny, the, the Motown man, um, he was resident here, he lived here, but uh, the extent to which he, you know, maybe had, um, uh, you know, where he was from or where his citizenship was from, 
would not really matter. It's that he was resident. I just he just comes into my head right now. I I'd, I'd imagine uh, Brother Benny was born in the U.S., but but again, that's not really that's not really what matters here. Is that you is that you're you. resident here? Thank you. Okay. For that. Can Which is them? a little bit different than the um, the Evanston requirement that uh, family have been resident of the town in the nineteen since the nineteen sixties. Yeah, and that's one of their requirements. Mm -hmm. So I, I need the difference. I need a some, sense some from people the people want to say reparations is uh, only for those people whose families were descendants, uh, who are descendants of the enslaved in the United States. So um, this is uh, broadening the uh, mm -hmm. eligibility to mm -hmm. black residents in Amherst. Great. Is the committee, uh, excuse me, is the, are the sponsors accept, uh, accept these changes in sub number two, Michelle? I would just point out that we um, think about the actual um, mechanism for funding. Uh, so if we follow through with this stabilization fund that the finance committee has proposed, which I'm not sure that all GOL members are aware of it, <laughs> um, at this point, but we have to think about how the process by which these um, reparations proposals will be funded. Um, so I don't know if that's part of the work of the committee to sort of interface and town manager Bockelman will be uh, hopefully, or I, I don't know if town manager Bockelman will be working with us like he did with the community safety working group. I think what we talked about is um, working with the town council directly. So I just wanna make sure we consider that we wanna be able to understand the legal realm, you know, the legal scope of how to actually fund these proposals as they become, um, as they are created. I need to do a time check from, I'm sorry, um, I just need to do a time check for the committee. Um, we also have, I believe, our guests uh, present now who were uh, scheduled to be at 11.15. It is now 11.23. Um, so uh, I need some help from everyone to get us through this if we can. Um, I ask the indulgence of our, actually I should check with our other guests because I know they are at school and I don't know how much time they have. Um, because this, we still have one other item to get through. Um, so I have not asked our guests to uh, wait to uh, introduce themselves. Um, and I don't have your names in front of me. I apologize because I don't have your document in front of me. Um, but could you unmute for a moment and just say hello and tell us uh, what your time frame is? Hey, um, can you hear us? Yes, we can. Um, we're pretty open about the time frame. Yeah, we're okay. pretty all right, so if you don't mind, we still have a fair amount of work to do. I'd say hopefully within the next 15 or 20 minutes, we can get through this and we return directly to you. Um, so you have at least 15 or 20 minutes. That's, that's uh, good, that's perfect. All right. all right, thank you. Well, you're going to see GOL in action. Thank you, Macy. Um, so again, again, uh, Pat, can you, uh, actually, could the two students introduce themselves to uh, the rest of the audience? So it's Macy, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Um, let me just turn up the volume really quick. Hi, I'm Macy Pariso. Um, yeah, I'm Eleanor Rash. Okay, great. Eleanor and Macy, and I believe your teacher, Tim Austin, is also perhaps somewhere present, but... Um, yeah, we'll, he's right next to us. I thought he might be, um, but uh, welcome to you all, and we hope to be with you in a few minutes. Um, so I'm sorry to the rest of you, but I needed to just do that. Um, if you would mute then, uh, Macy and uh, please and um, so item sub item two are people acceptable with this language or do they want to change it alter it I'm looking for hands please speak up or someone tell me I'm just I see uh, Dr. Shabazz so only to catch uh, what Michelle had offered I think that would go toward sub one a plan for developing ongoing mm -hmm. funding streams to repair past harms committed by the town against black people. I'm not sure whether uh, the update, the information you were providing would um, 
affect any of that language or add to it or not, but uh, it would seem to me that would go toward that area. Uh, as far as the question about sub two, um, the, uh, I, it, the only thing I would say is you had put in including eligibility criteria as just as a placeholder at that point for consideration. I just would say revisiting this if the uh, counselors uh, feel that the information shared about the census and the community feedback process uh, and that, as well as adding in Amherst uh, in front of it is um, sufficient uh, that we don't need to have that additional language of including eligibility criteria. But if not, then, uh, then, then I, uh, I'd imagine we'd leave it in. I think it's a decision for the sponsors. I could take the language out and it could be inserted at the council if some counselors raise a concern or we could leave it in. Um, again, I just need guidance from the sponsors and or the committee. Um, right now, the language is there, but it could easily be taken out. Any thoughts from anyone? Generally speaking, when language is in a charge like this, um, it will probably tend to stay. So if there's any uncomfortable sense about this, you might want to take it out and then wait to see if something we obviously have uh, five uh, counselors present today. Um, so if any one of them wanted to raise it, they could um, at the council and then the discussion would take place. So if you leave the language in, it's, I would say probably likely it will stay is my thought. So any thoughts from the, the uh, sponsors? I think it's fine to leave it in just as it is. We're okay. just doing sub two right now, right? I'm sorry? We're just talking yeah. about sub two, right? Yes, I am, yeah, Matthew. I sub yes. two is fine as is. Okay, all right. Uh, sub three, additional means of repair for anti-black structural and communal racism, including public events. Again, I've read this, so I'm not gonna read it again. Uh, sub four, coordinate with other groups working toward racial equity in Amherst to ensure collaboration. I think um, that one was supposed to be a main two. It just needs, it was, on my copy, it was a number two in the one higher on the outline. So what you're suggesting is, and good Use luck with this. Um, I'm not sure I can do this. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it would be it would be the equivalent of the first, that like that. Yes. <laughs> that's that's a miracle, folks. Um, <laughs> anyway, the sponsors. Is that what you actually intended? So this was uh, actually that's still not quite right. But I'll, I'll fix that. Later. One, I need to read at the two. end too. Okay, thank you. Um, might be able to do this. All right. All right. Sorry. Anyway, that is what these sponsors intended. That should be a separate. All right. I'll fix that later. How about so this can becomes three? Uh, that would be a three. Yeah. Okay. And my right. only comment on this one, um, well, two comments, one's easy. The library trustees are not extra municipal. They are part of the municipality. So I would get rid of the library trustees and et cetera, put an and between bid and chamber of commerce. So engage as appropriate community stakeholders such as the bid. And the cha chamber and, of commerce is and, how I would do it and delete library trustees, et cetera because the library's trustees are not extra municipal. Mandy, would you say in this spot that uh, faith organizations would be included? Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, and you could add bid, and then you could get rid of the and bid comma chamber of commerce and faith organizations comma to develop would work. I prefer faith communities. Faith communities works. That's, but that's just me. Again, speak up uh, right now. I just, people should just speak up. Yeah, I think that, that uh, there's a whole long list of possible stakeholders beyond what we're saying here, including nonprofits. Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, um, so I wouldn't, so, I wouldn't so, limit it. It just says such as. So it's just these are, um, so we've already mentioned two. 
and that's what um yep. so engage as appropriate community stakeholders such as the bid chamber of commerce and faith uh, faith communities and, and, that, and yeah. wait wait you could go ahead you could put a comma after um re remove the and put a comma yeah so it would read uh, the bid, chamber of commerce, faith communities, and others, other organizations as deemed appropriate. Or, or just other organizations. It doesn't have yeah, we, yeah. Otherwise, we'd have appropriate in there twice. We don't need appropriate yeah. in there twice. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Engage as appropriate. So it reads, engage as appropriate community stakeholders, such as the bid, chamber of commerce, faith communities, and other organizations to develop extra municipal reparations efforts that align with and complement the town's municipal reparations plan. And I would just capitalize municipal reparations plan, initial caps them all for consistency. I think that M needs capitalized too. Thank you. Okay. My next comments are on reports. Yep, please go I ahead. I delete everything up to the in writing because this is a one-year appointment. So I think annually is redundant. So- So reports well, in writing to the town council. So in writing to the town council, did we want to put an end date on it by a certain time? That's a question for Michelle. I know, I, exactly, I, that's the question. Usually, usually a charge has some kind of, it actually can be extended as we know. Right, but it that's, does give, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. that's what I was going to say. Is that <laughs> but they it gives some sense extended. of, uh, yeah. yeah. What, would, what would be a reasonable time from the sponsor's perspective, given the realities and given what's going on? Um, six months, three months, what? Um, I mean, I, I would I would like to see us uh, get somewhere in three months, and I think that we will. Um, but you know, uh, in writing to the town council, I would say to put maybe four months. I don't know. Um, what about Kathleen, Matthew, Emil, Carhalla? What do you think? How's September? What does that give us? June, July, August, September. That gives us four months. September thirty. It'll so, take at least a month to pass it and get appointments made. So the work will begin in July, uh, realistically, right? So July, August, that will give us three months. So we could do October 31st or September 30, either one of those. October, let's do October. Okay. So October. right to the town council by October. 31st. 2021. October 2021. Okay. And I think we just have to delete the thing under action and just write none. All right. Um, <laughs> so we have made a number of changes. Um, give people a moment to just look one last time. Obviously, Scrivener errors can be corrected. Um, but I think we've gotten everything. So essentially, at least two of whom are current or former members of elected bodies in Amherst. And including eligibility criteria concerning the word Amherst. Okay. We've changed two and three that hopefully will be corrected. And then Chamber of Commerce, comma, faith communities, that should be comma, excuse me, and other organizations to develop. No, there's no comma after faith communities. Well, we have the Oxford comma. We use the Oxford commas. <laughs> Don't Say ask me why. I know. <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> Mandy, explain this, please. We, we use the Oxford comma um, before the word and is our standard use. Why? That's just, 
I, it's just what we do. It's, it's From like, a legal, uh, the legal attorney in me says it's much more clearer than if not, it, it does indicate what the end of the section is. Imagine if there were phrases instead of words that required commas within the phrase, then it, 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 this allows it to be a little more clear. Anyway, it's just a peculiarity, Kathleen, of our committee, I'm afraid. All right. um, I apologize for that, but that's just what we do. And if we don't do it, we all just get really... Do we need a period after 2021, George? I was going to ask, I guess, yes. Okay. And uh, just one other thing, I, I know we're on a time crunch here, but um, I was thinking about the resolution, um, the the um, resolution that we that the town council approved in, on December seventh, and just wondering in terms of the charge, if there's any language that should be added that uh, references that resolution and the town's commitment to engaging in a path of remedy. Is that appropriate here or is it not necessary? It just, could be added into the purpose. Yeah, that seems right. <clears throat> so I something like in a in in accordance with or to further the goals of the resolution adopted on December 7th, 2020. I don't know if others agree, but that seems to keep us connect, connecting all the dots here. It seems like that would be a good thing to add into our purpose. So the language, suggested language would be AHRA's mission is to study and develop reparation proposals for people of African heritage in Amherst in light of or in- To further the goals of the resolution adopted by the town council on December 7th, 2020. I'm just gonna so again, Mandy, to further the goals of the resolution adopted by the town council on December seventh, twenty twenty. We should go back. I don't have the time now. If you know the title of that resolution, yes, we should, we should add in. It. I have it right here. If you want it, I can read it quickly. Please go right okay, ahead. a resolution affirming the town of Amherst's commitment. Hang second. Yeah, hang on for a second. I'm sorry. Sure, no worries. Um, I just want to see where it's going to go. It would go after the word resolution to goals of the resolution affirming whatever Michelle's reading. I'm going to put it in quotes for the moment. Go ahead, Michelle. Affirming the town of Amherst's commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for Black residents. Okay. So Amherst, so AHR's mission is to study, and I will fix the, uh, right, to further the goals of the resolution affirming the town of Amherst, Amherst's Commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for Black residents adopted by the Town Council on December 7, 2020. Okay. All right. Are we ready for a motion? I just have a quick question Darcy, about go ahead. the timeline. If the report is due on October 31st, um, does and the 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 um, life of the committee is one year what is the work of the committee going to be done on by october 31st well i don't, I don't, the I don't think that's i don't think that's mandated by by this charge well if or, we're reporting, or, to, reporting to the town council what are you reporting Back. Yes. I saw the report being the plan by October 31st and right. then two and three continuing on through. Yeah. Maybe that should be specified. Um, okay, yeah. You know, in writing a, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, municipal reparations plan, that's really what you're, you're expecting here in terms of report. Yeah. Um, I don't know this this you know it, usually at the end there's also a final report that sort of summarizes everything that was accomplished but perhaps I mean so what is it that is most 
It, can it just be a status report? And, and so it's left open more broadly. Um, it sounds like it might work to say a uh, proposed municipal reparations plan will be submitted to the town council by October 31st. Uh, and a final stat and a final report will be submitted at the termination of the charge. That's good. That's good. I like it. Um, so a proposed thank you, Matthew. A proposed municipal reparations plan will be submitted in writing. I think you just have to say proposed municipal reparations plan to the town council by October 31st, 2021. Right, obviously it'll be in writing. Yeah. I uh, go ahead. But you got it all in there at the just delete. Yep. Okay. So proposed municipal reparations plan to the town council by by not to by is by October 31, 2021. And sorry, Matthew, go ahead. Um and a and final, yeah. Yeah, a final report at the term. I don't know what the right word right. is end of the charge the uh, determination work or something like I'm that sorry? and a final Could report of the termination of the charge or determination yeah. i'm sorry matthew yeah I'm sorry mandy work charge yeah of the committee's work no yeah proposed municipal operations plan to the town council by october 31 and a final report at the termination of okay, the assembly's work. And what about completion instead of termination I or like that? <laughs> That's a better word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fix the spelling of municipal. Oh, it's close enough, isn't it? <laughs> municipal. I can't spell anymore. Municipal. That looks good. Okay. Anything else? Darcy, your hand still raised? Oh, no, sorry. All right, I'm willing to entertain a motion. I'll to... make the motion to recommend the council adopt the African Heritage Repara Reparation Assembly charge and to declare the charge as modified, clear, consistent, and actionable. Second, DeAngelis. Second, second by Pat. All right, I don't see. I'm going to go directly to vote. I'm going to start with Sarah. Hi. Darcy. Yes. Mandy. Aye. Pat. Aye. The chair is an aye, so the vote is unanimous 5-0. Let me, oh boy, Let's save that. Let me stop sharing for a moment. Let me put that over here. Um, and We now have the draft resolution. Let me share that. Uh, Go ahead, Pat. Is that, is I think the girls think it's theirs and it's... No, I know they do, but it isn't, I'm afraid. And- Let um, them know that it's a different one, please. Yeah, I apologize again. There are two items we have to deal with and we are, um, and this is the resolution. Um, I've tried to put it into a format. Um, it's going to look a little different than what you submitted to the committee, but hopefully it is what you wished. Um, this is the format in which we put these sorts of resolutions. I don't have a council sponsor. Anyone know who the council sponsor is or will be? I'd be happy to sponsor it. You can so put my name on okay. Sorry, let me, first of all, Okay, hang on for a second, folks. Okay, make sure we see the changes. All right. Community sponsors Amherst African Heritage Residents for Reparations. Is that correct? Okay, again, please just speak up because I can't at this point, I really can't see hands. Um, 
Kathleen, is that the is that the name that you all landed on? African American Heritage Residents for Reparations, I believe so. Okay. Is Shabazz African American? Yeah, oh, I'm missing. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Amherst African American Heritage Residents for Reparations. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, otherwise, I have not made any changes, nor would I, to the language. I've just put it into the format, um, which our peculiar format that we follow. Um, I've asked my colleagues to look at this in advance. Anyone have any concerns or comments about the draft resolution as it's presented here? And again, please just speak up because I cannot see the hands. Do you want me to go through it at section by section? So just to be the, the second to last whereas. Yeah. This one, whereas HR 40? Yep. I think it needs a that before it acknowledges to make it so a HR 40 is a bill pending before the U.S. House right. of Representatives, S40 in the Senate. That acknowledges. Yeah. Yeah. The fundamental injustice in humanity of slavery establishes a commission, studies slavery, its subsequent racial and economic discrimination against free people, and the impact of those forces on living African Americans today, and makes recommendations to Congress on appropriate remedies. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I had two questions about the very end, but I want to make sure people are happy with the whereas. I've not changed the language at all. Um, except here, now we've inserted that. So hopefully the sponsors are happy with the language they've presented and my colleagues are happy with the language that they have hopefully looked at. I did have two questions about the, the therefores. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, should it be the town council of Amherst? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hereby recognizes the date of February 25th of each year as National Reparations Awareness Day, and be it further resolved that the Town Council of Amherst or the Town of Amherst? So, so that would be the Town Council. We normally, resolutions like this normally say the Town Council urges um, right. the, right. it's the Congress and Senate to pass HR 40, S 40. Um, and, and then there's a third, a third, be it further resolved, that the clerk of the town council send this resolution off to okay. um, right. the president and all of that. That's a, th that third, be it resolved, that's missing is standard, and it would be the president, the, our, how, our McGovern. Um, right, our exactly. I could, I could copy that from a previous yeah. um, resolution. I can't do that right now. Right. Um, but that would be a further, be it for, right, further resolved. That would be inserted yeah. as boilerplate. Um, but you also make the point that this probably should state that we um, urge, right? So that language perhaps yeah. we should put in. Um, I would take it here. Um, I think it would be part of the second, be it further resolved, that the town council of Amherst urges senators and representative to support HR 40, although this one talks about educational activities related to it, but. The senators and representatives to support. Yeah, support. HR slash S40, the passage of HR slash S40. H, HR slash S, actually there's this period, I don't know why, S. 40 and urges the community or urges this residents of Amherst Resident. urges the residents whoops no typing was a requirement for this job and urges the residents of Amherst and one of needed to engage again this is a, this is just suggested language um, to engage in supportive activities to educate about the concept of reparations 
I wonder whether, is this something we are, yeah, okay. So that's what we have at the moment. Um, and then there would be a further, um, whoops, and, and I'm just gonna leave this. We just insert the standard right. setting off language. And I'm just gonna leave it like that for the moment. Um, but I wanna go back to this. That the town council of Amherst urges its senators and representatives to support the passage of HR slash S40 and urges the residents of Amherst or is it and commits itself to, are we committing ourselves to engage in supportive activities to educate about the concept of reparations and advocate for the passage? Um, actually, we've just advocated for it, so that would not be appropriate. Um, so are we urging the residents of Amherst, this is what the sponsors had originally, um, that the residents of Amherst engage in. So that's the language Mandy has suggested here. Is that acceptable? Give people a moment to look at it and think about it. Any thoughts? And again, please speak up because I'm really not seeing many hands. Um, Uh, now at least I'm seeing a few faces. Um, again, in a sense, people accept, they accept this change. You need to take off the end of the sentence there, um, George. Which, okay, to engage in sport activities, educate about the concept of preparations, advocate. Right. Take off the end right. right. So, but we're urging the residents to advocate for passage. So I think it still works. Oh. So, well, let's see. Yeah, that needs council? to be there. So it could be a separate, be it further resolved that the town council urges the residents of Amherst to engage in supportive activities to educate about, and so that could be a separate, be it further resolved. That's okay. Thoughts? Separating it is combined. Good. Okay, I, I'm hearing two voices here. One says combine, one says separate. Separate is easier in the sense Whatever, that, yeah. Good. Whatever okay. is fastest. Yeah. <laughs> I understand and urges residents of Amherst to engage in supportive activities to educate about the concept of reparations and advocate for the passage of these two bills and be it further resolved. And then we put in the boilerplate language, which I don't have handy, I'm afraid, and I'm not gonna try and find right now. Yeah. How do the sponsors feel about this? Is this what you had hoped pretty much um, <laughs> now that we've gone through and mangled it for you? I think it's pretty much what you wrote. Seeing no concerns raised, I'm going to entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to declare the, um, can, can you move up so I can see the title? Resolution in support of HR 40 slash S40 bills in Congress, clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Is there a second? Second to Angelus. Thank you. If I may, relative Please, to, go ahead. You're, you're moving to a vote just uh, point out that I've gone and currently the Senate uh, co-sponsors to S40 is at 21 in addition to Senator Cory Booker and both of our Massachusetts senators, Markey and Warren are among those co-sponsors. And in the house, HR 40 has gotten up to 188 co-sponsors. Uh, that was introduced by Representative Sheila Jackson Lee of Houston, and it's currently, I'm sorry, at 188 co-sponsors, and all of our Massachusetts delegation, including uh, Richard Neal, uh, is all on board for, for that. So I think this really strengthens the solidarity of our Massachusetts delegation, and hopefully can, uh, will spur, spur support for this moving, uh, moving through Congress. Thank you. Okay. Any further comments? Then I'm going to proceed to a vote. I don't see any hands. Uh, Mandy? Aye. Pat? Aye. Darcy? Yes. Sarah? Aye. And the chair is an aye. So again, unanimous uh, to declare a resolution in support of HR 40, S40 bills in Congress to be clear, consistent, and actionable. And right. I just want to- Please. Um, I just want to add that there's a, a 
a number, there are a number of people working on a, a state proposal for reparations. So I want to make people aware of that and to be stay tuned for your support of uh, <laughs> HD 5140. It hasn't yet been um, brought into into the house, but it, I mean, it will be soon. Thank you, Kathleen. And I think we'll let these good people get on to their next item of business. Yeah, just before you do, there's one thing I have to say. I um, It was brought to my attention. I wasn't there at the beginning of the meeting, but it was brought to my attention that the chair uh, used a, um, a uh, what's it called, a mode of speech um, about cracking the whip. And I just, given the content of what we're talking about today, <clears throat> I didn't feel like I could let the moment pass without acknowledging that that's really not an appropriate use of that uh, type of speech in, in this context or really in any context. So I know well it was taken. probably not intentional. I, no, it was not intentional, obviously, yeah. but I, I point well taken, I agree. Thanks. All right, um, so I'd like to um, move on to the next item of business, which is uh, to bring in our two guests and say thank you to um, the other guests who have been with us for the last hour plus. Um, so we're going to turn to, if I can find it quickly, um, take a moment. Sorry to interrupt, George, I need to step away, so I'm going to make you host. Okay. Do you want me to make Mandy a co-host? Please, would you do so? That would okay, be appreciated. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I just want to start by thanking Eleanor and Macy for their patience. Yes, <laughs> Government does not always run on time, and no. we thank you for taking the time out of your day to be Governments patient. never run on time. Let's get real. <laughs> no, no. Um, all right, so let me put this up on the screen and let me get that out of the way. All right. Okay. So Eleanor and Macy, welcome. Here is the resolution that the two of you, I think with the help of your teacher have brought to us and asked us to review uh, prior to sending it on to the town council where it would be voted by the council. The hope is that this would go on the next council agenda, but that is decided by the council president. Um, so we have here in front of us, everyone can see it, I take it. Everyone's clear on everyone's screen. Draft resolution, we would uh, actually take that out. So let me first of all, um, Resolution in support of H912, an act relative to forest protection, and H1002, an act to increase protection of wildlife management areas. Do those need quotes? That's a question. I, don't, I mean, you can put them in. I'm not sure it needs it. Okay, then we won't do it. Resident sponsors, Eleanor Rash. Make sure your names are spelled correctly because the chair is known to misspell things. And Macy Pariso. And the council sponsor is uh, Pat DeAngelis. All right, I've asked my colleagues to look at this in advance. I have done so. I have no changes or concerns, but I need to uh, hear from my colleagues. And the way we work, Macy and Eleanor, is that um, we solicit, uh, our job is not to discuss the merits, generally speaking, of this, um, though I think it has excellent merits but simply to declare it clear, consistent, and actionable. And then we, and that is our task. And then we send this on to the council where the council then votes on it. Um, and at that point, if there is a matter of, of substance or issue about the merits or demerits, then that's normally where it's discussed. Um, so here we're more concerned essentially that this uh, document be clear, consistent, and actionable. Those are the three criteria that we use. And my colleagues on the committee review it with that in mind. And sometimes they make suggestions. I think you've just seen in painful detail um, how we work. So I don't think I have to go through that again. 
Um, any concerns, questions, edits, issues, typos from committee members for this document? Mandy. I'll start with some edits and then I have some questions. The first Thank in you. the first whereas, I think we, com we um, capitalize Commonwealth. As we certainly do. Thank you. The stylistic. That's fine. And any others of that nature? Um, the uh, of that nature, the last whereas, yep. I think we need a because. So where is our understanding of climate change? Science moves quickly and we constantly find out new things. Many Massachusetts public land use policies are out of date regarding climate change. I, would, I thought the because at the beginning, because our understanding of climate change science moves quickly and we constantly find out new things, many Massachusetts lands land use policies are out of date. Sponsors, what do you think of that? Whereas means because, doesn't it? I'm sorry? Whereas means because, right? Mm-hmm. True. In other words, look at the others. Because trees absorb carbon dioxide, because our understanding, right? So I think um, Darcy makes a very good point. Does. Yeah, I think Mandy, it's covered. Okay. okay. It just read weird to me, that's all. Okay, well, let's read it one last time, one more time. Whereas our understanding of climate change science moves quickly, comma, and we constantly find out new things, comma, many Massachusetts public land use policies are out of date regarding climate change. Sounds good to me. Okay, that's just me. Okay. Um, Other concerns, yes, go ahead. So, so the the fourth, whereas this is where okay. I have questions because I did a little bit of changing of stuff. For okay, this is beginning. Stuff. There are many endangered. There are many endangered, threatened, or species that have earned special concern status in Massachusetts. Um, I I reworded that. I'm not sure it needs to be endangered, threatened, or special concern status species because everything's a species, but. Mm -hmm. um, question the bills themselves so questions for you know Eleanor and Macy in the end you say the forests are cut down um, that which will be impacted if forests are cut down ordinary plants animals and insects will be destroyed as well um, the the two acts themselves what what are they what what are they doing I, I just don't know anything about these bills so I was wondering if you could tell me what the relative, what each of these bills' goals are? Um, well, for one of them, the act to increase protection of wildlife management areas, that one is about um, adding more nature reserves on Massachusetts public land. Both of these bills are specifically about that. Um, and an act relative to forest protection is a more general, it updates a lot of old um, policies about our public forests. So that's the idea of them. That's state parks and forests as opposed to wildlife reserves. Okay. And so they're, they're aiming to plant more trees and just better protect those areas? Not to plant more trees, to protect um, older trees, to protect older trees more. Mm -hmm. They're mainly okay. protecting the whole of Yeah. A curious thing I learned from Eleanor and Macy was that a lot of our uh, land use laws are over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so they really are. Okay. <laughs> we could even add that into the last whereas instead of just out of date. That would be up to the sponsors. Yeah. So you're suggesting, I'm sorry, the last whereas you were suggesting what? I, I just thought if, if Pat found it fascinating and learned a lot that the out of date is because they're a hundred or more years old that that might be worth mentioning in okay. that where 
I so, think that uh, would be worth mentioning. I think that would be good. So let's look at this. Our understanding of climate change science moves quickly and we constantly find out new things. Many Massachusetts public land use policies are over a hundred years old. Yeah. And are, and are seriously out of many land use policies regarding climate change are over. Yes. Again, yeah. well, well, make sure. Not regard, hmm. Could you I say you many public land use policies are over a hundred years old and out of date regarding climate change? Yes. Are over. Uh, hundred years old we, and out of date regarding climate change. Go ahead. Um, we don't believe you can finish. We don't believe that a hundred years old thing is accurate. We kind okay. of it, but a lot of them are from the era of like World War II, and that's okay. a lot older. Right. So that's seventy, sixty. Yeah. So we could say are over 70 or over 60 years old and out of date, or we could just keep your language as you originally had it. So there's no fault with that. So um, it's really up to the sponsors. I, I understand you want to be accurate. And your point is that 100 years is actually not accurate. No, um, that's not true. But anyway. Oh, Councillor DeAngelis disagrees. No, so I'm being quiet. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I heard your voice, but maybe, uh, maybe that was just an echo. Um, would would you like the over 60 years old in there, um, Macy and Eleanor? Yeah, I think that would yeah. be a really nice ad. Yeah, we think it would sound really Could it be over 70? Because I was born in the 40s <laughs> when the war was happening. <laughs> so <laughs> what? what 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 year what number would you like? Uh <laughs> Over 60. Over 60, maybe? We'll go okay. with that. Okay. So, many Massachusetts public land use policies are over 60 years old and out of date. So, we want regarding climate change. See, that really sh should be many Massachusetts public land use policies regarding climate change. Yes. Are over 60 years old and out of date. And I think that makes that point very strongly. And that's so. What do the sponsors think? Is that acceptable? I think it's good. Okay. All right. Can I go back to the fourth whereas? All right. Fourth whereas. Yes. Are the blue spotted salamander and little brown bat special concern species, threatened or endangered, or each? Um, one second, please. We are just checking our house. Yeah. Right? Sorry. Sorry. I'm just trying to make sense of this whereas. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if you could say, whereas there are many endangered or threatened species that have earned special concern status. Well, I think that, special concern status is a different status completely. Well, surely you're a special concern because you're either endangered or threatened, right? Or is it just because they like the name? No, I think it's I think it's like a third tier. So how okay, so you're not threatened and you're not endangered, but you're you're of special concern. Because you're close to threatened. There's probably different policies or different rules, right? So if you're if something's endangered, then the probably the laws are are more strict. If you're a special concern, maybe they're a little bit more lax, right? So it's okay. So good. This is a question for our sponsors, and it seems the consensus of my of the expert members of my committee is that these are three different um, statuses. Yes. Is that your understanding, sponsors? That these are three very distinct categories. We did find out both species are endangered. Okay, all right. Okay. So you and could say, whereas there are many- Different okay. status than endangered. So special concern, a category in addition to threatened and- Yes. Endangered. Sorry, that sounded like Pat DeAngelis' voice, but I'm sure it wasn't. Um, the question was addressed to the sponsors. 
Could you repeat the question, please? Sure, I can understand. It's hard sometimes to hear on this committee because voices come from all over the place. The question um, is whether um, these we have endangered, threatened, and special concern. These are three distinct categories in your understanding. Um, they're both endangered species. No, but they're no, Oh. Are those this is a different question. I'm sorry, I'm not clear. A different question. Um, they are different categories. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So each these three. So that helps us. Um, Could we think about a rewording to read endangered, threatened, or special concern status species? My only concern, I don't mind the language, but I, you have like the blue spotted salamander and the little brown bat, which I believe you just told me, but I can't remember, um, are actually considered endangered, correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. So this makes it sound like they're a special concern and that's not what you want. So um, I like mentioning them. I think that's a nice touch, but the way it's Wording right now, it makes it sound, at least to my ear, like they're belong to the special concern category or status, but in fact they belong to the endangered status. So, so could we reorganize it to say there are many special concern, threatened, or endangered species? Yeah, I don't know. Like the It's also possible just to leave it the way it is. Yeah, and, and if people get, yeah, it's not right. I like mentioning it. I like the mention. I was just curious which one of the three they were. Right, and the answer is they're the first one. They're the um, first one. Right, and that you could just leave it that way if the sponsors are okay with that. Or if they have a suggestion as to how to arrange it so that it's a little bit clearer where the blue spotted salamander and the little brown bat belong. Could, could they maybe put, there are many endangered, threatened, or, or species that have earned special concern status in Massachusetts, period, um, of special note, or? Um, we don't like putting periods in these, I'm afraid, Sarah, but that's okay. Um, I hear you. Um, I think we're gonna leave it the way it is. And if someone reads this and thinks, which category do these two belong in? That would be all for the better. But I think I'm gonna leave it unless I hear objection from either my colleagues or from the sponsors. Hearing none, um, any other concerns, changes, edits, questions for our sponsors from my colleagues? Mm -hmm. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Amherst Town Council supports the passage of both H-912, an act relative to forest protection, and H-1002. Oh, that H needs a period after it. And the That's dash it. needs to come out. There it is. Be it further resolved. And this is the language, actually, that perhaps I should copy now and put in. If it's for the clerk of the Amherst Town Council shall cause a copy of this resolution to be sent to um, Governor Baker, President of the Senate, Karen Spilka, um, Massachusetts Speaker of the House, Ronald Mariano, members of the Joint Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Agriculture, State Senator Joanne M. Comerford, and State Representative Mindy Down. That's excellent. That's exactly right. Can our, our resident sponsors confirm that both bills are in front of that joint committee. Do we know? It is. Okay. Thank you. So we've got the, the entire committees that they're in front of. That's what I wanted to make sure. Good. Okay. So we have before us the resolution as amended um, with the agreement of the sponsors. Any further concerns, questions from either the sponsors or my colleagues? If not, I'm going to entertain a motion. Wait. Uh, 
I would no, I would like to make the motion. <laughs> Please go ahead. I move we declare the resolution in support of H912, an act relative uh, to forest protection, and H1002, an act to increase protection of wildlife management areas, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, Darcy seconds. We'll move immediately to a vote. This time I'm going to start with Mandy. Aye. Pat? Aye. Darcy? Yes. Sarah? Aye. And the chair is an aye. That is unanimous 5-0. Thank you very much to our patient, very patient uh, sponsors. I'm sorry we didn't get to you as soon as I thought, but I appreciate you staying. Um, do you have any questions for us? Any further thoughts? I don't think we have any questions. We just want to say thank you yes, thank for you. listening to our ideas yeah. and reading through all this with us. That's fine. That's our job and it's our pleasure. And this will go to the council and I will request that the council president reach out to you and to your teacher, letting you know when it will come before the council and inviting you to attend. Uh, our custom has been recently and I think we're gonna continue even though these are passed on what's called the consent agenda, um, we nonetheless, uh, fairly early in the meeting, mercifully for you, um, we um, bring each of these uh, uh, resolutions or proclamations forward. We have the, usually the council sponsor, in this case, would like to be Pat, would briefly describe it. Um, she wouldn't read the whole thing, but she'd briefly describe it and she'd probably read the, the therefore clauses, the resolved clauses. Um, and if you were present in the audience, you certainly don't have to be, but if you were present, she would acknowledge you. Um, and uh, that's what we're doing, at least at the moment. So, um, George, I, I would like to make a suggestion in this instance that the girls describe it and read um, and that I not do well, that. I think that's, that's problematic, Pat, but we'll okay. talk about this um, elsewhere. And it's not, it has nothing to do with the young ladies. Um, it has to do with people speaking <laughs> in town council um, who are not actually counselors um, in, in that kind of setting. So um, I've talked with Lynn about this and she agrees with me that, that it should be the council sponsor who speaks, but that we hopefully can and should acknowledge the sponsors being present. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's could what I, we're doing. Yeah. Mandy, if, please. If Eleanor and Macy would like to speak to it at public, public comment, comment, they're yes. always welcome. Uh, Thank you. Okay. So you may come, which yeah. comes before we actually vote on it, believe yeah. it or not. So the public comment will become before the consent agenda on this. So so that right. we would welcome you, you speaking to it at that point in time. It's an excellent suggestion, um, yeah. Mandy. And um, you just simply have to raise your hand when it comes, when, they, when you're recognized, just introduce yourself by name and then just briefly state, um, that you're excited by or support this and, and excited that the council is, is going to uh, uh, vote on it uh, and express your, your approval or support of it. So that's probably the best way to do it. That allows you to speak. Um, and um, so I will make sure that you are notified in advance uh, which meeting this will be. I can't promise right now because I don't know. Um, the agenda is already pretty full, but uh, if it is on the, this coming agenda, I will make sure that you're notified and invite you both to come and speak during public comment. That is at the beginning of the meeting. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank right. you. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye. All right. We still have Juneteenth. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, we've got a time check. We're, we're in big trouble, but I don't know what else I can do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stay and hopefully I can get at least two members to stay with me. We do have to declare um, at least um, the DAB to be clear, uh, excuse me, to declare that the pool sufficient so I can begin that process. And we really also have to do the same for FinCom, though in theory we could push FinCom off, um, but I'd rather not. So um, we do have to do with, deal with Juneteenth. However, um, I have not heard from um, Jen, so I don't know what to do with this. I think is timely. We have to get to it. Um, so can I make Please, a suggestion? Mandy. Go ahead. Yeah. She indicated that she wanted to, that the Juneteenth proclamation needed work in the past we've done where 
once she does it, it goes to you for review and then directly to the council with the, the waiver of the rule that GOL needs to see it. Um, I would be hesitant to declare something clear, consistent and actionable that our community participation officer has said needs reviewed. Um, okay, I mean, she was told in advance, many days in advance that this is coming. She was told again today no, that I know. it's on the committee agenda. So uh, I guess my... Um, so I, I think yeah. to just declaring, uh, doing the two committees that we need to declare the okay. sufficient. So we leave this uh, to the side. And if it does get to us, um, we'll use the rule that allows us to do it without formal review. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to start with DAB. And we need to, um, first we need to declare the pool sufficient. So you have, I sent you, I believe, demographic information on the pool. Um, we have currently, what is it, 18 um, applicants. Every um, district except one, unfortunately, one district only has one applicant. And so that's district four. So despite my best efforts, um, that one district has only one. Um, but I think at this stage, we really don't have much choice. Um, I don't think we should hold District 4 out. Um, we should just declare the pool sufficient as it exists. Um, but I'm open to thoughts on that. But at the moment, we have, what did I say, 18. And so all the uh, other, um, excuse me, all the other districts have um, multiple candidates. Um, in other words, three at least, and some have five. But District 4 only has one. And we have one student. Um, so student uh, doesn't really belong to a district, at least at the moment. Mandy made the point, and I believe she is right, that, um, that I had argued that you, you, should, you, you should tell me where you live <laughs> so I can put you in either District 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 5. But a student could very well obviously be resident in Amherst for nine months or eight months, but their legal residence could be somewhere else. And surely they should not be excluded from this pool. So I only have one in that category. Um, and so their legal residence or the residence they gave me um, is not Amherst, but they are a student at UMass and I assume will be a student at UMass in the fall. So they are included in this pool. So, Go ahead. you know, looking at our, you're absolutely right on the districts. It's unfortunate District 4 isn't quite sufficient, but I think it would be weird to hold out District 4. Um, otherwise, by numbers, I think we have the minimal sufficiency yeah. for yeah. a few of the districts and more than a minimal sufficiency for a few of the districts. Yes. Um, you know, Gender representation, age representation. Age is really good, but you know, looking at this, we've got a wide span of ages here. Um, gender's not as great, but but definitely. You know, put this up on the screen. I I, I realize um, we don't all have in front of them. So this is the demographic you know, info. It, as as usual, our racial and ethnic diversity is lacking. Um, yeah. I, at the same time, I think we need to move forward and get this committee appointed. So I would, despite some concerns about, about District 4 in particular um, and the racial ethnic diversity, um, I would be willing to declare it sufficient. Thoughts of other members of the committee? I agree, Mandy. Sometimes it's we strive for diversity, and sometimes we're not. We don't quite hit. I agree, and I think we should move forward. Okay, so I'm going to then make a motion to declare the pool for uh, the district advisory board to be sufficient. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any further thoughts or discussions? Now I'm going to move to vote. I'm going to start this time with Thursday. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Sorry. Um, Pat. Aye. Mandy. Aye. Sarah. Aye. The chair is a yes. So the vote is five zero. We declare the pool uh, sufficient. Okay. I'm going to put that away. And now we need to look at the um, selection guidance. I put that up on the screen and ask you to bear with me. So the current selection guidance that we've adopted reads as follows. Selection of voting members shall be based on the following. Diversity of residency, experience on past redistricting committees, consistent availability for meetings, particularly in light of the tight timeline and summer vacations, mix of perspectives, skills, ages, and occupations, and maybe we should say demographic diversity. What do you think? I'm going to edit this unless people... I think the the just disappears and just starts with demographic diversity. Exactly. Demographic diversity, including racial, economic, gender, and generational diversity. Obviously, that's right. In addition, the chair of GOL or designee shall solicit from the town clerk input as to whether there is any preferred knowledge, expertise, perspectives, or qualifications that the board might require to better assist it in its work. Now, I did do that. I did include the documents I received from Sue Audette, including her email, and also a, a uh, flyer, if you wish to call it that, that was sent to her from the state. And I think I made in my email communication to you simply the observation that um, you can see that Amherst's approach to this is an outlier. Uh, it's my sense is very much an outlier that the state does not, does, does not expect this degree of citizen participation. Um, so the, the flyer specifies um, things like engineer. Um, and I think that was the only, I, I don't recall Sue's email in detail right now, but I can bring it up. Um, she really didn't have anything specific to add other than engineering background. And I'm not really, I don't know that that's, we could add it, but, um, and I don't know if anyone has that in front of them, but I did put it in the packet. Um, Sue's contribution was um, essentially that, that, you know, some of the suggestions in the, from the state um, were not applicable to this body. For instance, a, a, a counselor or government official. Um, and the other recommendations were highly technical. We do have the IT person, which the state would probably support, but the only other one was someone with engineering background. Why? I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> Let's not As, take that on because we don't, you know, that. Yeah, I, I think it's so. I would suggest that this just be deleted. And that, because I have to send this to understand this gets sent to the uh, candidates, to the people who have applied. Um, I'm wondering if diversity residency could be a little bit clearer in the sense of, um, you know, uh, represents the five districts or something. Like that. Diversity residency essentially means um, uh, members uh, chosen from all five districts. Yeah, change it to five dis the district. Thing. Well, but I just, how do we want to phrase residency? it? So, you could just say like, diversity of district residency. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm okay with deleting the whole paragraph you had highlighted at some point. Yeah, I, yeah. it really is, you, it doesn't tell them anything. And so I'm gonna delete it. And what I'm asking you, when we, if we, when we approve this, if, if we approve it, I would, this is going to be sent to them. Um, along with the SOI document, which we'll look at very briefly in a moment. So um, experience on past redistricting committees. I think that's legitimate. Um, I don't know that any one of these candidates actually has it, 
Um, but I, I guess what this is saying is if you've had experience and it doesn't necessarily say where, you should mention it. Okay. Availability seems appropriate. Um, the SOI actually asks them to explicitly acknowledge that they're available. Darcy. Yeah, <laughs> I was going back and forth as to whether to even mention this, but yeah. generally speaking, it doesn't seem like, it seems like it would be nice to have maybe one, at least one person who's done this before. Um, but this seems to say that anyone who does have experience would definitely have a preference. Um, so uh, I, it's fine to leave it, but I, generally speaking, it feels like, you know, like if you were in before, you're in now. I don't think so, Dorsey. I understand it, but um, there are other, we have one, two, three, four other criteria that right. we're using. And I think I could easily say Smith has done this before and that's really valuable. But when we look, I mean, in most cases, we're probably looking at a pool of four or five people. We might just say that, that, and we only can say choose two. We might, I mean, I think we, we have enough room here to, to go either way. I don't think this, I don't read this as saying that if you've done this before, you're in. Right. Um, it certainly is a preference. I think we'd certainly perk up if we had somebody like that, but we'd also look at the other candidates and, and with these criteria in mind and, and we just talk about it, we discuss it. I mean, in the end, we will make a vote. We will vote on each one of these, so. The other thing I would say is this at least gives someone, uh, you know, an idea of what to talk about in their statement of interest, um, you know, and so, hey, if you've been on a redistricting committee at a state level or a local level, tell us, you know, like, let us know what your occupation is and how that might, or, you know, or skills that you have that might help you Right. draw maps you know and consider right. neighborhoods and stuff like that so i think it's right. more of a a guidance on what to write in your statement of interest okay any other further thoughts i'd like to vote on this if we can but again i don't see but re please raise your hand or speak up if you have other concerns um not seeing any i'm going to uh, make a motion to uh, adopt uh, this, this selection guidance for the district advisory board. I'll second. And Mandy seconds. Any further thoughts or discussion? Then I'm going to go to vote. The chair is going to begin this time. The chair votes yes. Mandy? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Um, Pat? Aye. Darcy? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to put it back. All right, where it came from. And now we're going to look at the SOI description, which is in, and I am not making any recommended changes to this, but I want you to look at it briefly and make sure you're, excuse me, okay with it. The other thing I will send them is this description of what we expect of the SOI. It's a bit wordy, I apologize, but this is listed our boilerplate. Um, we asked that it not exceed 700 words. We could change that <laughs> to like 400 words or 300 words, but at the moment it's 700 words. The SOI shall describe why the applicant is interested in serving on the body and the relevant skills and experiences they will bring to the body that align with the adopted selection guidance. Now this is the it shall include an explicit acknowledgement of the timeline and their availability. Is that clear enough? Maybe that's a lit, you know, basically just what it's supposed to mean is we're asking them to, we, we can take this out, but what I felt was we should have everyone acknowledge um, the, the timeline that essentially is from July through mid-October and that they're available. Now, if somebody doesn't acknowledge that in their SOI, that doesn't mean we're going to throw them out but it does, it means I have to reach out to them and confirm it. What do people feel about that? Do they want it in? Do they want it out? In my I think it's fine to keep it in. Okay. I think it's fine to keep it in, George, but I wonder if we want to use the word like commitment to the timeline or do you, instead of just acknowledging it because 
or you just think acknowledging is fine because acknowledging means you got to be there. Right. Acknowledging means I'm aware that this is from mid July through, through from July through mid October. It's 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 not a year. It's it's just those four months, and I'm acknowledging that, and I'm saying that I'm available. And I understand that some people may very well not do that. They may just, you know, just forget. And that what we agreed is that I would reach out to them just to confirm that, you know, in your SOI, we asked you to do X, but you didn't. Can you just confirm that? We felt it was important. Um, so that's why it's here. Um, resumes and attachments will not be accepted. I'll establish a deadline. The deadline I will give you in a moment, but it's like it's they have like 12 or 14, 12 days at least to do this. Unlike FinCon, which we'll get to in a minute, where they'll have six days because of the schedule. So they will have ample time to do it. But it is made clear that if they don't, um, is it stated in here or is it stated? Maybe it's not stated in here. Um, it is. Any M is yeah, not through SOI right. withdrawn. So, um, and then it just tells them it's going to be posted and uh, so they know. And um, so any thoughts on this, any changes, any concerns? Again, I, we don't need to vote on this, but I just need to have your consent because um, I'm going to send this to them along with the uh, um, other materials. Okay. All right. So no changes were made to that. Let's quickly look at the timeline here. Okay. And then we'll be done with this. I can find it. Maybe I can't find it. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. I got so many things in front of me right now. Okay. So this is what we're looking at. Um, we've adopted the selection guidance. We've declared the pool sufficient. Um, I'm going to send this out probably not today or tomorrow because I'm going to do FinCon today, but I will send it out the next day or two. Um, they will have until um, June 14th to complete the SOI. And my understanding is that anyone who, um, we're not closing applications, so people can still apply. And if they apply, I would simply send them the relevant, including the SOI stuff, and tell them that that's all I'll do. So we could get some more applicants, um, but the deadline for everybody is the date that the SOI is due, which is June 14th. Okay. I would post the SOIs and CAFs on uh, June 15th. Is that correct? The CAFs also get posted. Is that correct? Mandy, that's right. Okay. Um, See not get posted to the public packet they get distributed to counselors the counselors already have copies of them right. so that is a mistake i post the sois but not the cafs and cafs distributed let me see to counselors i've made that mistake before the committee members i guess is what it is um well no the cafs go to the council too right yeah, counselors need to see the CAFs. Well, they already have the CAFs. Um, well, they often, I think Darcy's right, made this no, point yeah. that often they don't. I mean, it's understandable. I, they get so much I stuff. put, for, for CRC, I put the CAFs in a separate folder in the SharePoint packet okay. just to collect them, okay. but um, they, don't, so, they don't get posted online. So maybe post SOIs mm -hmm. and CAFs, well, distributed council in this case, on SharePoint. What do you think? Again, anyone speak up, but this is partly for me, so I don't just do what I probably would have done, which is just put the CDS. I think actually um, Athena caught me, actually. The, the last time I did this, she said, excuse me, Mr. Chair, but CAFs are not public documents. Yes, yeah, okay. so 
right? Yeah, that is correct. Yes, SOIs will be made public, and my would be to send them to the counselors as well. So they would be. But Mandy, do you feel that just making them public is sufficient, or do you feel like we should send them to? That's a lot of SOIs coming to everybody's mailbox, but. So it's supposed to, I think, just send the packet notice. I, I right. think it's send the packet notice to the town okay. counselors. And, and then counselors can go and find it and, and they can do go find them in the packet. Thank yeah. You. June 23rd, I'd like to have a special meeting just for this. Now we could do other business if we have time. You've seen how things went today, um, but this would be the sole agenda item. Um, we would start with it. And if we had time for anything else, we would do it, but this is the only thing we do we would have to discuss and go through and make a, a voting recommendation. Are you open to a June 23rd meeting? I think the answer is yes, but please speak up if not. And then I would cancel June 30. To try why, and at least, um, go ahead. Why, why cancel it? We well, have so be much three, three GOL meetings in a row. So we'd have three weeks in a row and it just seems a bit much. Um, I agree, Darcy, if we have business that, well, for instance, you might make the point of, appropriately, that we're still working on the OCA uh, document. And so you may feel that we should meet on the 30th um, to devote ourselves to that. Um, yeah. and so you would like to meet on the 30th. Well, I would like to take, yeah, go ahead. Meetings in order to get through all this stuff, because this is the third meeting. This is the second meeting where we haven't gotten to the OCA appointment process, and it's the third meeting in, okay. that we had since okay. starting and we were okay. going to get done in two meetings. So if it is always at the end of the agenda, then we're never going to get to it. Well, hopefully you agree with me today that I had no choice. Oh yeah, no, I I'm get sorry. it. I, I'm sorry, but yeah. you're good. So your point is you would like to meet on the 30th and that you would like uh, the agenda item to be essentially um, the OCA process that we're reviewing. Thoughts on that from my colleagues? I, I'm going to support, unfortunately, meeting on the 30th um, because it's not just something like that that needs done. Um, CRC is going to be sending at least two bylaws, one of which is already ready to come to GOL for its clarity review, which is the moratorium. Another one's going to come in the next two weeks, which is the okay. zoning. Okay. And, and those have hard deadlines for getting to the council for votes because of state law. So okay. Okay. we might need to address some of that during some of these meetings too. All right. So I hear two voices already saying they'd like to meet on the 30th. Anyone else? Uh, I will survive it <laughs> and I see the need for it. Okay, all right, so good. I'm not going to cancel the 30th. Um, we will meet on that date and uh, okay. Uh, anything else with related to this? I think that's, so let me just save that for myself. I'm gonna close that. And now we need to do, I'm sorry, I apologize to all of you, but we need to do the same for FinCon. This should hopefully go a little bit easier um, because okay, let's take a look and see Probably shouldn't speak too soon. Oh. Did I do that right? No, I didn't. Yeah, can you make it a little bigger? Uh, can you see that? A tad bigger would be helpful. I've read okay. it. That's all right. Let me see if I can make it bigger. I got to get my dog. I'll be right back. All right. Did How's we already that? vote the finance pool sufficient? Uh, no, we haven't. Okay. So we have to do that. And uh, thank you, Mandy. That really uh, probably should be done first. Um, the pool now has six members in it. Um, uh, we've gotten a couple of people who, um, when they filled out the, uh, the council CAF, put all bodies down. So I had no choice but to include them. They've all been contacted. Um, uh, so we have six applicants. We in theory, we'll have to interview six people. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but um, the pool has six. It's more than adequate in terms of size. One of them, as you know, is um, up for, is uh, someone seeking reappointment. So I'd like to make the motion that the pool for FinCon is sufficient. I'll second. Thank you, Mandy. Um, 
I'm going to go to a vote. The chair is yes. Mandy? Aye. Darcy? Yes. Sarah? Aye. Pat? Aye. Uh, it's unanimous. We declare the, the pool sufficient. FinCom guidance. Um, this is what we've used in the past. Uh, excuse me, selection guidance. Everyone can see it. Okay. Um, the only thing I would, only concern I have is changing term limits, or should we use the phrase term limits and just say reappointments? Or should we just- Could we? Could we just delete the phrase that that those two words completely and just start the paragraph with generally? I think that would be good. Uh, okay, I, I'm not against that. I'm just I want to catch the eye <laughs> of the reader who may or may not read this. Uh, I'm I'm asking them to read it carefully um, for obvious reasons, but um, maybe that's so. If we do this and again, just. Sorry. Here's the real. Okay. So what we're suggesting is that. George. Go ahead, Darcy. Is there anything in the materials or the vacancy notice or anything that gives applicants the information that a position in question is um, uh, that is a reappointment? No, um, I feel that we really can't, given our, our policy, we really can't do that. Um, all we can do is, um, I mean, it's open to discussion, but my feeling is all we can do is urge people to read the selection guidance and, and uh, hopefully they will read the part that we just highlighted and just talked about so yes. that they're aware. But what they don't, you make a good point, Darcy, what they don't know, and I don't know how we can tell them um, is that one of the applicants is someone seeking reappointment. And I guess it's a question. Can we, is it permissible? It's a statement of fact, um, but does it violate? Yeah, go ahead. Isn't that public already? It's, it's not. No, it's not. It really isn't. Um, it only becomes public when, um, you know, we post the, uh, the SOIs. Applicant yeah. names are never made public until SOIs are posted. So until the SOIs are due, there is no, there's only a chair who has information that a potential, a person who might be seeking reappointment has indicated they might seek reappointment. That doesn't mean they'll actually submit a statement of interest until they do. Um, our applicant pool's not closed until the due date of the statements of interest. So I think it's inappropriate to say to any applicant who's expressed interest, hey, we know someone else has expressed interest that might be seeking reappointment, but they haven't actually submitted anything yet. So, you know, we can't say they have it or not. Like, it, it just doesn't seem appropriate to me. But is there, there's only one person whose term is expiring, right? That's mm -hmm. correct. So, and that's public because Mm -hmm. that person's appointed. Well, that person's going to actually submit an application is not public until that person, until we post the SOIs. Right. Right. And I think it's just, I hear you, Darcy, I know it's painful. Um, Cause what? we will, well, I mean, I guess I mean this Pat that we will be interviewing, yeah. I guess the answer is why, and the answer is no, that's just the way it is. And we interview as many people as present themselves and uh, we follow our procedure. I think that's what we have to do. So I, I withdraw the painful part. So um, can we declare, I, I guess I just need your agreement here. We're not gonna vote on this, but it would be a selection. Actually, we do vote on selection guidance, don't we? Sorry, apologize. Is this acceptable to you? Are you ready to move to a, a motion and a vote? Or is there any other changes or concerns you have with this statement? So my only other thing is in the second actual paragraph under the bullet points, the first right. paragraph under the bullet points, in addition, the chair shall solicit from the chair of the finance committee input. We haven't added any input from the chair. Should we then be deleting that whole paragraph, that whole yeah. section? Yeah. Uh, because in fact, the chair has not done that. And that's because the chair is an idiot. Um, but, well, actually, 
chair is i'm gonna i'm gonna ref refute that the chair is not an idiot the chair is overwhelmed with everything that needs done i completely understand well, the hell of guess, chair doing two that, of these. No, i know i know but I, also we could argue that he shouldn't do anything until he has your approval so um, and we haven't approved this yet so if you were to say that you wanted um this then i would have to reach out i would reach out to the chair of finance and solicit um but i think here we have so here what you're suggesting is to remove deleting this. that sentence. Yeah, let me just for the moment um, strike it. I'll delete it in a second, but maybe. Um, yeah. I think other members of the committee have expressed concern about this in the past. For, and I think for somewhat valid reason, because the, the selection guidance is fairly explicit. Uh, and we're talking about three individuals who are non-voting members. So I think the, the concern that was raised um, was that why should the chair of this committee have special input, um, which this would seem to give them. Um, with planning and with zoning, it seems somehow different, but maybe that's, maybe I'm just, you know, splitting hairs, but if we take this out, this would be, I mean, this would be the selection guidance going forward until the next time we do this. I don't have a problem with it. Do others have that? I mean, especially in this context where I don't really have the time to do this, A. And B, um, what guidance we've given in the past is already captured in this document. And C, in the future going forward, why should the chair of this committee be given special you know, input beyond what's already been given? So I'm going to delete it. Is that acceptable? I'm going to make a motion that we adopt selection guidance as amended. Is there a second? Second, Swartz. Thank you, Sarah. Any further discussion? Then I'm going to go immediately to a vote. Start with Mandy. Aye. Pat. Aye. Uh, Darcy. Yes. Sarah. Aye. And the chair is yes. So we have adopted this selection guidance. And I'm going to um, put it away. I'm going to now look at the schedule because this is going to be dicey. I want you to be understand what we're doing and get your input. Um, So this is the schedule as it stands. Oh, come on. Pat, can you see it all? We have voted on selection guidance. We have determined the pool sufficient. My plan is, and I need your approval, my plan is to send this out later today. Um, we include selection guidance and instructions how to complete the SOI. The deadline would actually be June 8th. And I'm doing that because so I'm giving them basically six days. From today until Tuesday, June 8th. Um, so the deadline would be June 8th. After that, no one will be considered um, on because, because on the 9th, I have to post uh, the SOIs and distribute. Let me get this right. Remember, try to do this again. George, are you sending uh, this to the to candidates in one email? Uh, each one gets a separate email. I could send separate, I could send, you know, multiple emails to the same person, but generally I send one email saying, you know, I can show you the language that I've drafted essentially says, we met today, declared the pool sufficient, 
we're now prepared to go to solicit SOIs and attach our X, Y, and Z, namely the committee charge, um, you know, description of the committee and the description of SOI. And you must get this back to me by June 8th, no later than June 8th. Is there, do you think that it makes sense to require them to confirm that they received it so that if they don't do that, you'll know that some, there's a problem? I'm just, I, I you know. Well, the like, problem being that, um, I mean, the only problem, yeah, I mean, in other words, that they just don't get the email at all. In other words, right. I send, yeah, and they just, um, so I could put in this, I don't have it right now, but I could have a sentence that says, please confirm that you have received this, something to that effect. That seems like it would be good, plus a really good topic line for both this and the DAB, you know, to right. you know, either all caps or something. No, no I understand, right. Um, especially for this one, because the timeline is tight. And so another, an, another option, instead of just confirming receipt of the email is ask them to confirm their availability um, for, for at least for finance, their avail availability for interviews on June 9th, or um, that they'll decline to be interviewed, something like that. Yeah, I, that is in the document uh, as the draft email. Um, and so I guess, Darcy, that would be the uh, other way to deal with this. I do tell them that we're actually, do actually doing the interviews on the 16th, right? So, um, and it's during our, this again, I need your approval as a committee, but I'm hoping that we will do them during our regular uh, committee meeting and that the, the 16th meeting will be devoted ex probably exclusively to FinCom. I don't see how we can get around that. So if 16th would be FinCom, we'd have uh, six interviews, could be more if um, anyone else gets in under the deadline. I hope not, but at the moment it could be six, depending on, if people fill out the SOI or not. It's possible that someone reading the selection guidance and doing their due diligence would say, oh, you know, but if whatever. So we have potentially six interviews, 15 minutes each, and then a uh, discussion and vote after that on the 16th. And, it's the, and the 16th is the soonest we can do it because I can only post the SOIs on the 9th. And so I guess answer your question, Darcy, the thought would be I would in there, I would say um, we do interviews that will be done on Zoom. They will be done on the 16th during our regular um, council, you know, during our regular meeting. Please notify me if that if well, actually I just tell them that. Mandy. Um, the state of emergency ends June 15th. And if Governor Baker's emergency legislation to extend the uh, waiver of the open meeting laws does not pass, we have to do them in person. So I would not guarantee, I, I think you need to talk to Lynn and Paul about how you notice this meeting that's supposed to be up well in advance without knowing whether we have to uh, I don't know what to do with that. I, I mean, I hear you, I'm gonna have to do that. I, I think you need to talk to Paul. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know what he can tell me, except. I mean, I would quit. just do meetings in person if people can attend in person, because then you don't have to worry about legislation getting passed or not. Um, because if you notice it for Zoom and the legislation doesn't pass, we move to in person. Yeah, and I think this is the other thing we need to consider. I don't have a problem with that. We could just make it in person. Um, but if someone can't make it, and I understand people working, et cetera, et cetera. I don't see I don't see how we can um, say oh well, too bad. Well, We're so have, we yeah. we might have to be in person as a committee. We could yeah. always accept someone to call in for the interview, but okay. we as a committee might ourselves have to be in a room together due to when oh, Governor the Baker's emergency is okay. lifted all right. and all. Okay. All right because I don't think it's been extended yet. I know he's okay. filed legislation to do so, but that actually needs some votes and the hearings were today. <laughs> All right, I will check with Paul on this. Um, oh, Athena's got her hand raised. Go ahead, Athena, please. She knows. 
Hey, no, they haven't had a vote on the um, legislation to extend the remote participation through September 1st yet. Um, but we could, I, and things are, like you said, Mandy, kind of still up in the air. But we can we can update those locations, just like a, if a meeting were changed from one room to another, we could update the, the posting to a different location if we needed to. So I, I, I don't want that to hold you up. Um, I'm more if, concerned about the poor interviewees um, who I, I just need, you know, am, can I do this from my home on Zoom? And the answer seems to be no matter what the state decides, the answer could be yes. We might have to be in, in person in town hall, but they could still do it remote. Is that correct? Um, so everything is up in the air. IT is, is working really hard. I've been working with them a little bit about doing a hybrid. Um, that's definitely the plan for council meetings if we have to be in person starting on the 15th. Right. I don't know for sure that we're gonna have dedicated IT staff to help us do every committee meeting sure, as a sure. hybrid because it's sure. a little bit more staff intensive than, sure, sure. Um, than these fully remote meetings. And I'm sorry, I also have to let you folks know to please wrap up, I need the room. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like in like, like yesterday you need the room? Yes, please. Don't. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I'll do my best here. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize to our note taker as well. Um, all right. So um, that's something I'm going to have to deal with. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so stop share. We have done everything that we do not have the May 19 minutes, I do not think. Um, but that's not a problem. Uh, we want to, we've agreed to meet on the 30th. So that's been settled. Um, any questions from the committee about uh, what's transpiring next? The next time we meet um, will be interviews for the uh, FinCon. Okay. I'll be sending out materials and hopefully, my only last thought, my only concern is if we have somebody who simply cannot meet during the 10 30 12 30 slot either remotely or in person we probably would be obligated to arrange some kind of evening session right but why don't we leave that so open right. just so you know it. just that's a possibility i do everything in my power to prevent it but that's a possibility okay i would just make a note that we don't have public for public comment thank you um i don't know if anyone remembers but the last meeting i actually forgot I don't know if anyone remembers that. I did afterwards. I thought, oh my goodness. Well, we just got asked to leave the room. So, George. Goodbye. So, thank I love you. you. Thank you all. Thank you, Athena. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. If I close out as co host, I'm not going to kick you out, am I? Uh, no, I, no, I'll have to reopen. <laughs> <laughs>